Good morning. Happy Sunday. If you are in the house with us today, you are welcome to stand as we go into worship. And if you're joining us from home, hello, we love you. We're praying for you. And I um, just want to say happy Sunday, happy Father's Day. It's a good day to worship the Lord. Amen. I want to read a bit of scripture over us this morning. This is from Ephesians 6. In this chapter of the word, it's talking about the armor of God. Um, and then after this, after that part, it talks about this. A final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in the dark world and against evil spirits in heavenly places. And we know that God's victorious over all of those things, right? So as we enter into a time of worship, we're going to be singing a song that says, this is how I fight my battles. And we're referring to abiding in the Lord, putting on his goodness, his armor, the things of him, his word, his righteousness, his gospel, and in worship. We, we declare his goodness, and that's how we overcome by, by the word um, of our testimony by the blood of the Lamb. So let's just go into that, into worship time with that confidence in who we are and in who God is today. Oh, we worship you. There's a table that you've prepared for me In the presence of my enemies It's your body and your blood you shed for me This is how I fight my battles There's a table that you prepare for me in the presence of my enemies it's your body and your blood you shed for me this is how I fight my
wonderful and beautiful and powerful name, God. Hallelujah. Lord, we just want to exalt you today and give you the glory and the honor that only you deserve, Father. Thank you for allowing us to be here this morning, God, to gather together, whether it's here in person or virtually. Lord, I know that your presence is here and it's there, God. Your presence is everywhere, Lord. And we just want to say that you are holy, God. You are a holy, God. You are a powerful, God. And we love you, Jesus. Thank you for your love towards us, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, God. Hallelujah.
Lord God, we thank you for today. We thank you that we can worship in body or virtually your name, your glorious name, your wonderful name, that we could praise you wherever we stand, wherever we sit, because you are an awesome God, Lord Jesus. We thank you for all that you've given us today. We pray that you would be not only with the service, that you would be with our offering, Lord God. And we pray that we would honor you with everything that we do. I pray that everybody who's watching, that they would be able to recognize, no matter what their experience is, no matter what their situation, that their eternal Father, that their Abba Father is there with them right now that you are beside us, that you go before us, that you are with us at all times, and that we know that you are the constant in our lives, that you are our creator, that you are the Father that lifts us up, that shows us who we really are, that you show us our identity in Christ. And I pray that those that have never heard that before, that have never experienced that before, that they would say yes to that that they would say yes to how you see them as their Abba Father, Lord God. And that you would just be able to just drench them in your presence, that your Holy Spirit would surround them, Lord. We praise you. We worship you. We sing hallelujah because you're worthy, because you deserve it. And we're so thankful for your presence. Thank you so much, Lord, for all that you do and all that you are. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, worship team. I'm feeling so excited today <laughs> to be in the house of God after a long season of where we haven't been able to worship and praise together as a church. So we thank you for those that were able to join us today for our first in-person regathering, as well as for those that are our family that is with us virtually as well. And we just want to welcome each and every one of you guys. We do want to just kind of clarify some things because there may be, for those that are here in person, a few things that are different in terms of navigating the building. And so we just wanted to clarify that just for, for those of you that are here, um, that you may notice that there were sanitizing stations downstairs. Um, there's also sanitizing stations in the lower level. Um, we have a little bit of different chair positioning in the sanctuary. Um, as well as there's some different locations for exiting. So if you need to go to the bathrooms and, uh, for service, you can definitely take um, the, the back door opposite from where you entered. Um, as well as when we exit the building, we're going to go out a different location um, out near to the right of the stage. And that's where you can also drop off your offering uh, as well. There's a small table just waiting for you. Um, but there are several ways to give. Now there's three, not just two. So obviously you can drop off your offering in the container on your way as you exit or even before service, you can do that too. Um, you can all still continue to give uh, online via the giving link on the Hope Church website. And then if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you're going to notice um, the section that says Hope Midway Offerings, just to ensure that those monies will go towards our specific campus to pour out and love this community. The third way that you can give is you can still mail in that offering to the church. Our address is 6059 South Archer Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60638. So you can also follow along with the sermon, which many of these links and different things that are related to our church and service are on the YouVersion app. And so uh, it's an op awesome opportunity if you go to the events page. You can save uh, the sermon notes and you can follow them along later. You can take notes while the sermon's going. But please, if you haven't already, you can check out that YouVersion app. And there's still the opportunity for prayer. Um, we do still want to continue with you guys. If any of you online, in person, you have a prayer request, you can continue to email those prayer requests even beyond the service at hopechurchmidway at gmail.com. And that way our prayer team can pray for you. Um, so that's just a, one opportunity there as well. Now we have, with prayer, we have really been thankful for all of those that were praying for the food distribution that we participated in uh, this past Friday. 
Um, it was an awesome time. Um, I unfortunately wasn't able to be there, but there were over 300 cars that were past food and, and everything, and it was a, a drive through food distribution in Harvey. So for those that were able to financially give, for those that were able to pray, and for those that were able to serve, we just wanted to say thank you from the bottom of our hearts, because that's one of the ways we like to love on our community, is to just get into the different communities, whether it be right around the church or uh, around Chicago land. Um, and so we're so thankful because especially that community within Harvey, the church that we help serve, they just recently lost their senior pastor actually last Sunday morning. So this was a very great honor to be able to serve there because the church wanted to continue to love on that community because that was the heart of their senior pastor was outreach. So this is a, from the bottom of our heart, thank you for loving them. We do still have um, some opportunities for small groups, summer small groups, which they are still going on virtually at this season. Um, summer small groups just started this past week, so if you wanted to be a part of one but you haven't signed up, you certainly can do that. You can go to the Hope Church website, and you can check out the link that shows all of the small groups that are available. And if you find one that you want to be a part of, you just have to email smallgroupshope at gmail.com, and we can make contact with the leaders that are leading that group, and they'll contact you, and all will be good. And small groups are great because they just connect each one of us in a different way. And even in this season, virtually, I know I had my first one last Thursday, and it was beautiful, just having like a Zoom call and praying with ladies and just learning about the Word of God. That's what it's all about, how we can grow together and grow closer to the Lord. Now, for those that were here in person, the way they knew how that they had a spot for them is they registered online through Sign Up Genius. And so we already have the service for next week um, on the link. So if you go to the Hope Church website, there's going to be a service link for specifically for the Midway Campus. And you can register through there, through Sign Up Genius. And then the only thing that you would need to do is to note if you are bringing more than just yourself, you can just put that number on there. So with limited seating, we really only at this time can have 50 people in the sanctuary, so we want to honor that and um, follow CDC guidelines. Um, and we're super excited to have everybody here in house. I could sense the presence of the Lord of us all being here together. And so as you're comfortable, because we love you, whether you're near or far, as you're comfortable and you feel comfortable enough to come to service, check out that registration link, and it's ready for you. I would be remiss, this is my very last announcement, but I would be remiss if I didn't say happy Father's Day. <laughs> Our Father's Day is just a wonderful day for us to regather in the house of God, not only to honor our Abba Father, but to be able to celebrate the Midway Dad. So whether you are at home or you're in person, we're so thankful for you, and we hope you have a beautiful Father's Day. It's great to see everyone here today. Uh, I was very excited when we got the news that we were able to open up and have everyone here. We were quite uh, excited about it. 
And, uh, you know, I'm grateful for us to be able to celebrate this day, and we're grateful for all the lessons I've learned from my own father personally. Um, as soon as I could grasp some deeper concepts, my dad um, took me in around to be around to different men's events within the church. I went to breakfasts, I went to conferences, I went to hangouts, because my dad wanted to make sure I, I had some godly influences around me and to be around uh, godly men. So for him, he didn't have his father around from age four until his mom remarried at age 12, but even then he didn't have a godly example. And so he wanted to say, I want to get a godly example for my son to see around. So he brought me around to these other men to teach me how to be a man of God. And I think that's a great thing that we can find in the church is how to be a great godly man. Amen? All right, let's try this one more time. It's great. Hey, we're all in person now. We can say it. All right? So it's great to be in church, to be around, to see examples of great godly men. There we go. We're back. All right. Well, when we see this as influence, we see this as well in the church. In the early church, we saw men and women partnering together and building and bringing out change to our entire world, side by side, changing everything. I think that's something that we want to see as well in the church today, men and women working side by side. Imagine if the church had 50% men and women. Now, almost every church in America does not have that. It's more women than men. That's just kind of how that is. And, and I'm not just talking about um, guys filling seats. No, I'm talking about people that aren't just, you know, uh, sa saving a seat, but actually helping to change lives, ready to get involved. Now, I'm not knocking men by any stretch of imagination. I am a man, obviously. Um, but I'm saying uh, it's great for us to look at and see what God has for us. See, God has something great for us. And so we want to encourage people to see what God has and to be excited about what God has for men today. Because God wants men that are active and not passive. Now, I think it's so easy for people to be passive today. But we want to be active. We want to be praying men, teaching men, leading men, mature men, godly men. Because somehow men have gotten more passive over the years. And that's not in our nature, but we've seen that happening. And God has something better for us in our purpose for us to be active and not passive anymore. And so we need to look into that today. You might be sitting here and saying, well, I'm not a man, so it doesn't seem like this service is for me if you're just talking to men. Well, many of you have sons that need to have this information. Many of you have brothers that need to have this information. Many of you have fathers you've been praying for that need to have this information, have coworkers who are men. Many of you just know a man. Raise your hand. Okay, great. That's pretty much everybody. Everybody knows amen. So these are people that we're praying for. These are people we're reaching out for. These are people that we're loving on. And so God is going to use this information, whether you are a man here today to help you or whether you're praying for somebody or working with somebody or God's giving you that wisdom to share to someone else. God is going to use this in your life today in amazing ways. Amen? So we're going to look at this and know that God can speak into here. And we're going to look to see what makes a man to be an effective, active man of God. And it starts with actively seeking our Savior. Actively seeking our Savior. This is important. It can't be a passive seeking. A lot of times we all do this in church sometimes. It's a passive seeking. What I mean by passive is on Sunday I'm going to look at God and maybe I'll hear some songs about him. Maybe I'll talk about him every now and then. I'll wear a Christian t-shirt or something. You know, and that's kind of a passive way of, of talking about God. But we're talking about actively seeking. It's a personal relationship. It's a personal, not a passive relationship. It's a personal relationship. So we need to be active in saying, I need to know who this person is. I need to know who this person is. So for instance, if I got married to my wife and I didn't actively get to see who she was and someone just said, hey, here's an arranged marriage. This is who you're going to marry and this is just how it's going to be. I'm like, okay, well, this is how I'm going to be for the rest of my life. All right, well, I'll see you later. And never actively got to see her. Everyone would say that's a horrible relationship, right? But I mean, how many people do this with God? You know, we come out and we say, well, you know, I'm wanting to follow God. That's great. And we pray and we say, God, I want you to, in my life. I want to have a relationship with you. I'm excited to have this relationship with you, Jesus. And I'll see you next Sunday. I'll see you next week. And we're not actively seeking out our Savior. God wants us to be actively seeking out. We need to see who God is for ourselves. I mean, that's why we're very big on, on putting the notes on version, which is a, a free app. And we want that so you can actively seek out the scriptures for yourselves. So you don't just hear on Sunday what we're saying, but you look at it throughout the week, and you look at your notes, and you say, okay, what does these scriptures say? How can I look at this? Let me look even more in context, because the more we seek out, the more we get, and it's a beautiful thing, amen? And so this is why we're doing this for. I mean, imagine on the first Easter, 
Uh, that we see this, the people looking at for its personal relationship and seeking our Savior. The first Easter, we have Mary Magdalene come out to a couple of the disciples. Look at John 20, verse 2. It says this. So she ran and found Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and she said, they have taken the Lord's body out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. Peter and the other disciple, that's John, started out for the tomb. They were both running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. You see, John and Peter were out here running, saying, we want to see who God is for ourselves. We heard what Mary told us, but we want to see it for ourselves. We want to actively see who God is for ourselves. We want to know this. And we see John even wanted it more than Peter. He's out running that boy, all right? He was a little younger, but still, he outran him to say, I want to see who he is. He had this personal stake into this. See, these men actively sought to see Jesus for themselves, And we can understand this. The more we seek God, the more we're going to find him. You're going to see more and more what God has for your life and see the excitement of what he has for you. See, this is not some kind of a work. No, we need to be men actively running to the altar, to meeting God in the morning, to know his word personally. And if this seems like work, you're not getting it. All right, I want to give you a great verse for anybody who's saying, well, you know, that's so much harder, and I got to look at the Bible for myself, I have to find time to pray, and that seems like a lot of work. I got a great scripture for you. Psalm 34, 8. It says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joy for those who take refuge in him. See, the more we see who God is, the more we actively seek for ourselves, the more we find out who he is. The more we're saying, this is so exciting. I get to know who God is. He's given me this opportunity for me to have a personal relationship. And we get to understand this the closer we get to God. The more we seek, the more we're going to find. And I believe that this is what men will find, that God is good. You know, I grew up in the church, and, and after I walked away and then came back to God later, I said, I want to see everything for myself. I want to see it through new eyes. I know all of these different Bible verses that I grew up in, and I did Bible quiz when I was a kid. I knew scriptures and all this other kind of stuff, but I want to see what, who he is for myself. So I started to get into the Word. I started looking at it for myself and said, God, just give me eyes so I could see what you have to say, not what everybody else had taught me, but just what does your Word say personally? I want to see that. And the more I saw it, the more I saw things I never learned before. And it wasn't that I wasn't raised right. No, it was just God speaking directly to me through his word and that's what God does for you as well that's why it's exciting to get into it it's not work no we're going to have a relationship we have a conversation and God wants to have that conversation with you so we need to have this and actively seek God to see the changes in our life because we can't see change if we're not doing this we want to be like John running ahead moving forward I believe that as we run to seek our savior we'll be empowered by what we find you see, Mary Magdalene told the disciples, well, I think that they, they robbed the tomb. And so we have John and Peter run out there, and they see, no, it wasn't that the tomb was robbed. It was that Jesus was resurrected. They got to see something deeper for themselves when they saw it for themselves. So I want to encourage you, seek out there and see what God has, because we can't be passive and expect to see any change in our life. We can't. No, we can't stay back and expect to see the supernatural. The matter of, imagine if Peter and, and John just said, well, then somebody must have robbed the tomb and we're not going to see anything. They would have missed and seen the clothes all nicely uh, put together and folded up and put out to the side and seeing that this wasn't a robbery, but this is a resurrection. And then later on when they saw Jesus, they were anticipating, they were exciting because they said, well, something different has happened here. It hasn't been a robbery. Something different has happened. We want to see what this is for ourselves. So this is important. I mean, think of what if Peter and John would have missed. If they just said, well, the women got this. I don't need to worry about it. They would have missed what God had for them. God has something special for women and men, a special relationship and a specific calling. And God has this for us all, and we need to seek this out. We need to seek this for ourselves. This seeking, it changes us. It helps us from going from being passive to being active. It's seeking helps us to run to do what is right. It's more than just head knowledge. It's more than just having some more knowledge and saying, well, I've read some more, I understand some more. No, it helps to encourage us. See, men need to be seen as helping to lead the charge again. See, there's this sexist view that came into the church that church should just be women-led in many of the areas. Like, okay, well, maybe a pastor will be a man, but all the other ministries, well, they could be ran by women. That's perfectly fine. And so men took us back seat and said, okay, well, let them do that. But that's not how we saw the early church. No, we saw women and men working together in tandem, partnering together. But we've missed that somehow. People have stepped back and said, well, there's just more important work to do. 
What's more important than changing our world through Christ Jesus? What's more important than that? What's more important than people understanding who God is for themselves, for us helping out with the next generation, for us helping out with the current generation, for God speaking to us to move in tangible ways in our society? What's more important than that? And so I think we need to see men and women partnering together to lead this charge again, working together. We can't let anything stand in our way. This next generation needs to see who God called us to be, men and women working side by side better together. Amen? And these are important for us. God has called men to stand up in this hour as well. And there are great needs, and our help is necessary. May we be like David who ran to do what is right. And when you think about David's biggest triumph, and this is a story that people know even outside of the church of David and Goliath. You know, this, this young Hebrew boy who was out there with just a sling and a stone and sees this giant who has all this armor, and now he's so worried about what am I going to do, but we always kind of look at the battle. We don't look about what happens before the battle. So I want to set the stage for you. David is coming out there just to drop off some food to his brothers who are there, who are supposed to be actively fighting in the war, but everyone is passive. Every single person that should be fighting, every single man that is there that should be fighting is being passive. Why? Because they're scared. They're scared of what's in their way. They're scared of, the, of what it's going to cost them if they go up against Goliath. This could cost me my life. This is going to cost me my comfort. This could cost me my blood. This is going to cost too much. And so they were worried about that. And so they were all passive as Goliath stood up there mocking them day after day after day. And David looks at this and sees the need that is there. He says, well, I need to do whatever is necessary to help to meet the need. This is important. This is important. He doesn't wait. He's active. No, David runs to do what is right. 1 Samuel 17, 48 says this. As Goliath moved closer to attack, David quickly ran out to meet him, reaching into his shepherd's bag and taking out a stone. He hurled it with his sling and hit the Philistine in the forehead. That stone sank in, and Goliath stumbled and fell down to the ground. Verse 50 says, so David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone, for he had no sword. Then David ran over and pulled Goliath's sword from a sheath. David used it to kill him and to cut off his head. I always love everybody forgets about the sword. Everybody remembers the sling and the stone, but everybody kind of forgets about the sword. They don't talk about that, but I think that's important for us to know. David ran out with whatever he had with him. He said, God, whatever you've given me, whatever the abilities and talents you've given me, I'm going to use in this, in this need right now. I'm going to use to help out in this need. You might feel I don't have that much talents or abilities right now. What can I do? How can I help out with the needs that I see around me? God has given you everything you need. And the more that you're obedient to him, he's going to start giving you more things that you can use later. We see that with David. He used what he had with him, and then he also got David's sword. He has David, I mean, it's Goliath's sword that then becomes his later on. He gets this later on when Saul is chasing him, and the sword becomes him, and he has his back with him when he needs it the most. When he has no other weapon, he gets his weapon back. Why? Because he went out to meet the need himself. And if you say, well, God, I'm going to use whatever talents and abilities you've given me, God will show you supernatural things that can happen. If you could say, I could do it in my own nature, well, then it's not supernatural, is it? No, we need to say, well, God, I'm going to use the talents and abilities you've given me and do whatever you've asked me to do. And God, just use it and work through it in supernatural ways. God says, you've given me with this little bit. I'm going to give you so much more to do even more things. And we see this in David's life. Why? Because he ran to do what is right. He met the need. David's willingness is contrasted by the other man's fear of failure. The other men were all so afraid to even do anything. But David comes out here and leads the charge. And not only does he lead the charge by helping against them, as soon as he feeds Goliath, everybody starts to follow him. All these men that were passive before, all these men that weren't doing anything before, they saw one man being active and said, I can do that. Why? Because his God is my God. God can use him. He can use me in that same way. And he started to lead them, and they took out the enemy. And in fact, we don't hear them being passive again during David's reign. They continue to be active. Why? Because they had someone who came out there and said, I am going to be active. I'm going to use what God's given me, and he could do it in my life, and he could do it in yours. And God did amazing things through this. We see the shift in the men when they see someone being active. Someone saying, what can I do, not what will it cost? And this is what we have to ask as well. What can I do, and not just worry about the cost? The more we do that, the more we'll be active, and we won't 
be passive. See, David inspired these men who didn't want to leave their comfort to become warriors, become the men that God called them to be. May God inspire us again. Amen? This makes me think of a, a missionary by the name of uh, C.T. Studd. And he, was a great, he had a great example from his dad of what it meant to be a, a believer. And so his dad had different missionaries who would come over and speak to his son and his other son. He had two sons, and he, he'd speak to both of them, and they would talk to him, and they would minister to him, and they would share who Jesus was with him. And C.T. had nothing he wanted to do with it. He was very big. He was a crooked player. was known all around. That was big back then, okay? Um, you know, so, I mean, imagine somebody who's kind of like uh, the head quarterback in Chicago in high school. And everybody's looking at him. Everybody's saying, oh, man, we know all the great things that are going to happen in his life. And his dad is saying, yeah, you have all these great skills that God's given you. That's awesome. But I don't care about anything if you don't have your heart coming with God. If you don't have this relationship, this other stuff doesn't matter. So his father continued to reach out for him and reach out to him. And then his brother got sick. His brother got sick and, and got really ill. And, and C.T. and his brother, they started praying that he would get healed. And supernaturally, his brother was healed. Why? Because he had a praying father who never gave up on his sons. After this, C.T. came over and said, I want to give my life to the Lord. I want to seek out him personally. It's not my father's relationship with God. It's my relationship to God. So he personally sought out God for himself. While he was in school, he got a bunch of the different people who were in athletics at his school and said, let's start a Bible club. And he got all these different people together and they started to form a club. And they had a man who came out there and started to speak to them about China and the great needs that were in China at that time. And he said, hey, this is something we can do. And so he grabbed six different people who were in that group with him and they moved and sold everything they had. And they moved out to China and said, we want to help out and reach out because why? They ran to do what was right. They saw the need and they went to help. During that time, C.T. gets married, and he ended up also getting an inheritance that came in. He wasn't saying, well, I'm just going to be sitting back and be passive. Now I have money. I don't have to worry for anything. No, he was active. He actually sold the stuff that he had in his inheritance and said, I want to give out to the people around me. Why? Because God showed him a need, and he wanted to help out. And so he does this, and he helps out, and he's reaching out to people. And then he comes back to England where he's from. He comes back to England, and, and he goes around, and he starts sharing all these wonderful things about who God is and uh, encouraging other people to not be passive but to be active. And people start going to the mission field at home and abroad, and they say, we want to start reaching out. We want to start speaking out to other people. We can't be passive and say it's all about my relationship with God. No, it's my, my relationship with God that moves me to be active. And so he started to share that with other people. He then ends up going to India. And he starts being a missionary out there and starts to speak to people. And he sees three salvations a week, which is huge. And he starts seeing and speaking to different people and starting to help out the churches out there to build up and to become a great, mighty move for God in that time. And he's so excited about what God's doing. He said, God, whatever you're wanting me to do, let me know. And then God puts on his heart to go to Africa. And so he goes to Africa where he ministers and shares until the day that he dies. He's out there. God uses him in four different countries in his lifetime. And we see amazing shifts that happen. Why? Because a man says, I'm not just going to be passive anymore. It's not about my father's relationship. It's about my personal relationship with God. It's not about me just saying, well, now I have my soul right with God. I'm going to heaven. Everything is great. No, he says, no, God, you've got something more for me. I want to run to do what is right. I want to do something more that you have for me. And so he did that. He saw major changes that happened in his life. It's important for all of us to know we need more studs in the church. Amen? It's Father's Day. i got to say a dad joke. Okay, work with me here. Okay? <laughs> all right. But when we need more people like this. We need more people that will come out and say, I want to help out. I want to be this example. Seeking God and running to do what is right. Men doing the most important thing they can. Pursuing having the Father's heart. There's nothing more important for us to do. Because the more we seek out God, the more we're going to see his heart. The more we want to run to do what is right, that is showing that we're having God's heart. Because it's not just us doing something saying, well, I could pat myself on the back. We did something to help somebody else out. You know, when we were at the Harvey distribution on, on Friday, we just had the funeral that morning for their senior pastor. It was a very surreal experience to be at a funeral and then one hour later to be serving out in the community. It was a very surreal experience you know, for, to helping out with a friend of mine. But it was easy to do because he had touched so many lives. Every single car that came up, I was helping out in the, the meat area when we were handing out the meat and the milk. 
And every single car that came by, I said, yeah, you know, and they were thanking us. I said, oh, this is great. And they have a service at this time. And, you know, we'd love for you to be there. And this church has always helped out in the community. I can't tell you how many times I heard person after person who said, yeah, I remember this church from when I was a kid. This is a second generation church. His father started and then he continued on. And they said, yeah, I remember what happened. I remember, and this is so great. And I was here when I was a kid, and, and he spoke into my life here, and he did this. And I was like, this is awesome. And he was a man who was active, and so he was active in his community and actively changed lives. He wasn't passive. And there was a change. Why? And he had this because he actively pursued having the Father's heart. It wasn't just about a bunch of lists of things that I can do and say that I've done something new, and I could pat myself on the back, post it up on Facebook, and you all could feel that I'm a very good person. No, he just did what needed to be done. And that's what you get when you actively pursue God's heart. You're not caring about the fame. You're caring about doing what is right, having that love. Some people have given up thinking that we can have this kind of difference in our society anymore. But that's people who have missed the heart of God. See, Jesus shares this heart that God can give by showing a metaphor of his love. He talks about a father and a son relationship, that the father was loving, but the son was passive. The father was actively looking to love his son, wanting to help him out in many ways, but the the son was passive, just wanting to focus in on himself, just wanting to focus in on his own things. You know, the son was self-centered and reckless. He was seeking pleasure instead of purpose, and he was running from his responsibilities. He just wanted to have a passive life. Whatever I can do for myself is good. I don't need to be actively involved with what God has for me. Well, he realized, as many people realize with that, that finding out that this life is unfulfilling. He started saying he was wasting everything that he was given, that he wasn't using the things that he was given. By being passive, he was wasting it. He says, that's not a real life. There's something more for this. He comes to the end of himself. He remembers his father's heart. He says, you know, I'm just going to go back so I can work for him. That's, that's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to come back and work for him and help out any way I can I'm going to be active a little bit, but I know I can't have the same standing I had before because I know what I've done. And so he comes over to seek out his father. Luke 15, 20 talks about this return. So, so he returned home to his father. And while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming, filled with love and compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His father isn't complaining. He's not demeaning. He's not condemning, he's showing compassion. Now, maybe you didn't grow up with this type of love for your father, from your father. But aren't you so grateful to see that we have a heavenly father who gives us this love at all times? This is the love that God has for us. This is who we're following. This is the one who cares so much. The one who didn't just talk about love, but the Bible describes him as love. This is our Heavenly Father, the one that loves you so much that he came here, he died for you, and he rose again so that you can have a relationship with him. That's the extent of his love. Continues going over and over again. He will never stop in there. And I pray that every single father that's here will learn from this relationship and say, I want to have that same kind of relationship with my kids as well. I want to constantly be running and helping out. Because the interesting thing about this story is culturally it was normal to wait at the gate. It was not normal to run. What do we mean by this? Well, the men would sit at the gate so everybody could see what they were doing. If you were a leader within your town, you would sit at this gate and you would start to help out and and say what was going to be happening. So it was kind of like they would be running court there. They'd be passing laws there. They'd be telling, uh, you know, trading and everything started in that area. All this stuff happened at the gate. You always saw the leading people there at the gate. And this father was definitely one of the leading people at the gate. So he was sitting there. and It was normal for them to be there so people could see who they were. And the son knew exactly where his dad would be. He knew his dad would be at the gate. And he also knew what would happen with everybody else that was there at the gate. They would come in there and see this son who had walked away, who was so passive, self-centered, and worrying about everything only about his own pleasure, who would be coming back here filthy and broke and say, well, yeah, can I just work for you? I mean, imagine the humiliation that the son had to feel he was about to have. He was going to have to go in front of the gate in front of all these other elders, in front of all these other men, and say, yes, I'm coming here now saying I need to have this change in my life. I'm going to have to say in front of everyone and feel mocked by all those around me. 
That's what he expected. And that was normal. You had to pay your penance in front of the community. That's not what the father does. No, he runs out to meet him. See, if you were to run in that society, you were showing yourself to be demeaned. You were demeaning yourself. If, if you were to lift up your robes, as this talks about it, lifting up your robes to be able to run, you were showing yourself that you were just a common worker. You're just a common person. Aren't you so glad that Jesus came down to be common so that he, we can have a relationship with us? See, this is this example. I'm saying, I just want to be there with you no matter what it takes. This is the love I have. This is the love that I have for you. And it's so great. And why does this father do, th- do this? The father does this because this is his heart. He runs to this son because he knows his son's worth. Aren't you so grateful to know that you have a heavenly father that knows your worth, that knows what you are capable of and will always run to you. This is our father that we have. This is the love that we have, and this is his heart that we can have in our lives as well. He believes in what you can do together, the change that can happen. So may we actively pursue to have this heart for others. May God put this into our lives. My father introduced me to different men within the church who actively spoke into my heart. There's men that helped out, um, that names wouldn't mean anything to you. Ray Du Bois, Pat, James, Ralph, all these names you're like, I, I don't know who these, person, these people are. Some of them have passed away. But it was interesting. Out of all the men who were actively seeking out and saying, I want to be a part, I want to be involved within this church, Two of those men who said, I just want to help out in any way that God can give me. They were like David and said, I just have this the stone and the sling and I'll help out in any way. God helped them out in so great ways because they were faithful in little things. God gave them many things. And two of those men came up that were pastors and helping out in churches today in different areas that desperately needed people to lead. Why? Because they were active. And they started just where they were at and said, God, what do you want me to help me out here? And God said, okay, I'll use you here, and then I have other things for you. You're listening to me here. You're being active and not passive, and I'm going to actively use you in different ways as well. There's still great examples of what God can do. May we also actively seek our Savior, run to do what is right, and pursue having the Father's heart. May this be the definition of our lives. You might be saying, well, I'm, I'm not that type of man or, or woman here today. You know, I'm just trying to, to just get on myself. I'm just trying to take this next step. I'm just trying to, to live for God as easily as I can. You know, I, I'm just trying to, to help out. I'm just trying to get my, to myself right. I want to encourage you. God runs to you. And why does he run to you? Because he believes in you. He believes in what you can do together. I love this verse. One of my favorite verses, Ephesians 2.10. It says, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things that he planned for us long ago. See, the son came and thought, well, all they're going to see is the dirt and the poverty and the brokenness that I have with me. That's, that's what the son thought, that everybody was going to see at the gate, but that's not what they saw. They saw something different. They saw a father running out. They saw something different. And why did the father run out there? Because the son was his masterpiece. He believed in what God could do in and through him. He believed in what they were capable of together. He says, no, you're, I'm not going to treat you as someone who's just working for me as a servant. No, I'm calling you my child. And I love that that's what Jesus says. He says, you are no longer servants. You are now heirs. You are now a part of my family. I'm adopting you in. I am running to you. I am bringing you here. Why? Because I believe in you. And I believe in what God has for you. You are his masterpiece. The more that we seek him personally, the more you're going to start to see his heart. You're going to start to understand his love that he has for you personally. So I encourage you, continue to seek. The more you run to do what is right, Say, God, what is the area that I need to help out in? Help me to be active and not to be passive. The more you do that, the more alive you start to feel. Why? Because you're living God's purpose. You're seeing what God's doing in your life. One of the most exciting things for me as a pastor is seeing people getting involved in a ministry that God's called them to, and you see the excitement that's happening in them. It doesn't mean it's always easy, but they have this excitement because they're actually doing what God called them to do, what they were created for, their purpose. It's an amazing thing. And then the more we seek out, we start to have the Father's heart. 
that changes everything. It changes our relationships personally, with coworkers, with family members, with friends. It changes everything from the inside out when we ask to have his heart. This is what we get from God. See, God sees us differently. He's running and excited that we're ready to get actively involved. So whether you're a man or a woman, I want to encourage you as we prepare to close to know that he believes in you and gives us chance after chance because he believes in what we can do together. It's active, not passive. Let us pray that God can use us today. With every head bowed and every eye closed. God, we thank you so much that we're able to gather today, whether it's virtually or here in person, to hear about your love. God, I pray right now, first of all, for anyone, male or female, who does not have a relationship with you. Maybe feels, well, I've been so passive in my life. I've been living for myself. I've been living on my own. I, I know that God has, wants a relationship with me, but I've been pushing it aside and doing my own thing. God, may they see right now you are running to them. Their heavenly Father is here for them. You care for them so deeply. I pray right now, wherever they're at, they'll pray this simple prayer, but yet it's so profound. All the son did was just walk into town and he was accepted. God, you just asked us that we would first just confess of our sins. Say, God, we know that we've done wrong. We know we've gone our own way, but we want to have a relationship with you. God, I pray that we will believe in who you are, God. You called us to believe this, to believe that you came, that you died, that you rose again for this relationship. God, I pray that we would seek this out ourselves and know that in our bones, and you didn't just run out for everyone, God. You ran out for them because you love them personally. Jesus, we thank you so much for giving us this opportunity, for not just speaking of love, but showing love. I pray for everyone right now that is confessing their sins, God, and saying that they believe in who you are. You allow them to see that it is that simple because you want to make it that easy. You just wanted the sun to show up showing that he's wanting to have that relationship again, and you ran to him. And I pray that they'll see right now as they're coming to you, you're running to them. And you're not making them somebody who has to work as a servant. No, you're adopting them as family. May they come away knowing they are family today. We thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing in Jesus Christ's name. God, I want to pray as well for every single man May we show a change in the church. Not out of guilt, but God, out of excitement about what you can do when men and women partner together as the early church did, as we are called to do, to work side by side, to help to lead together. God, I pray that you would encourage us all to seek you out. I pray that you will allow us to be encouraged, to taste and see that the Lord is good, to see the joy for those who find refuge in you. God, may this speak to our souls and every single day to be excited about getting to know you more and more. God, I pray that you will help us to run to do what is right. God, to say, what are the needs that are out there? And I'm not going to be passive like everybody else that is out there. No, God, I want to be active. I want to be a leader. David was a leader not just because he beat a giant, but because he stepped up when the need was greatest. And people said, that's somebody I can follow. God, I pray that you would help us to do the same. God, to be leading and helping out to make warriors for you. God, we thank you for the heart that you give us that helps to change us from the inside out. God, and that's what we pray for. Because these other things of seeking and helping out, if it doesn't have your heart in it, it's just to make ourselves feel better. So God, we seek out your heart right now. Help us to have that same kind of love, to forgive people the same way that you forgave. God, to be running after others the way that you ran after us. God, to be showing your love at every single moment. God, we thank you for the opportunity to be in your house and to have our lives changed by your word. We thank you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Let us stand together as we celebrate this wonderful father of ours. Amen.
God, we thank you so much. God, we want to see you glorified. We want to see people know who you are. And the only way that happens is if we're active. We're involved in other people's lives. God, sharing them truth and love. And God, that love is in an action. That is a verb. So God, we pray that you would encourage us. God, we pray that you would allow us to see and to dream your kind of dreams. God, when we see the reason you run to us because you're so excited about what's going to happen in our lives. You're so excited to see what's going to happen. You're so excited to have that relationship again, to see our purposes fulfilled. God, for us to have a fulfilling life. We thank you so much for being there in every single way and for being the ultimate father, the ultimate example of love. Thank you for all you're doing in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I want to encourage you that if you shed that prayer and said, I want to have a relationship, and it was your first time sharing that prayer, I want to encourage you to uh, let us know. You can let us know if you're here today. Just talk to me afterwards. Or if you're watching from online, let us know at hopechurchmidway at gmail.com. We want to follow up and give you some great practical steps to take. Uh, we want to also let you know, as my wife brought up before, um, the seating is already active, so you can sign up for next week's service. Feel free to do that. Um, for next week, that's going to fill up probably pretty fast. As you're comfortable, please do that. And we're also going to have a service online at Tuesday at 7 p.m., so you don't want to miss that. We're going to be talking about loving God and what that looks like when it doesn't seem that God is always good, how we can still find this great love even during this time, so you don't want to miss that. God bless you. We love you. It's great to have you here. It's like a family reunion. It's awesome. God bless you guys. Great to see you.